na msafi kabisa na tumai basi wiki yako imekuendea vyema kabisa na wiki ndio yako unaianza vyema hujambo na karibu katika upeo wa TV47 awamu ya saa tatu. mimi ni Esha Omar mtangazaji kwa lugha ishara ni Josephine Auko lakini kwanza kabisa tupate vidokezo Wakurugenzi wa kampuni ya Keroche waachiliwa kwa dhamana. Serikali ya andaa mikakati ya kuboresha mitaaduni. Na tutakufahamisha changamoto wanazokumbana nazo wasichana mayatima mikononi mwa walezi wao. Karibu sana mtazamaji tuanze kuendelea kukupasha taarifa zetu kwa utendeti na vile vile kwa ukamilifu. Mkurugenzi wa kampuni ya Kerocho, Bithabita na mumewe Joseph Karanja wameachiliwa kwa dhamana ya shilingi milioni 15 na milioni kumi mtawalia. Wawili hao walifikishwa katika mahakama ya milimani mapema leo kwa madai ya kukwepa kulipa ushuru wa zaidi ya shilingi bilioni 14. Bithabita na mumewe Karanja walikana madai hayo mbele ya hakimu Francis Andai. Wawili hao waliwakilishwa na wakili James Orengo na James Irungu miongoni mwa wakili wengineo. Mwanahabari Joash Onsari hanaarifu. Baada ya mkuu wa mashtaka ya Uma Nurdin Haji kuagiza wamiliki wa kampuni ya Keroche Breweries Limited kukamatwa siku ya Jumatano kwa madai ya ukwepaji kulipa ushuru, hii leo waliwasilishwa katika mahakama kuu ya Milimani kujibu madai hayo. Bele ya hakimu jaji mkuu Francis Andai, mkurugenzi mkuu Tabitha Karanja na mumewe Joseph Karanja ambaye ni mwenyekiti wa kampuni hiyo walikana madai yote kumi yanayohusiana na ukwepaji kulipa ushuru. Upande wa mashtaka uliongozwa na jaji Alexander Muteti na wa utetezi James Orengo ambapo walitoa mapendekezo yao kabla ya kesi kwa muliwa. So you know we urge you to deal with the implications that is before the court and the material before the court. You know if the accused persons were a flight risk, they should be material before the court. Hakimu Francis Andai aliwaachilia watuhumiwa kwa dhamana tofauti. Tabitha Karanja aliachiliwa kwa dhamana ya shilingi milioni 15 pesa taslim huku mumewe Joseph Karanja ambaye ni mwenyekiti wa kampuni hiyo kuachiliwa kwa dhamana ya shilingi milioni 5 pesa taslim for the second accused person he may be released on a bond of Kenya shillings 5 million with one surety of a lump sum or a cash bail of Kenya shillings 2 million he is however given a period of 7 days within which to deposit the money in court given his condition so he has to pay the money between today and uh, within seven days the first accused person we may be released on a bond of Kenya shillings 15 million with one surety of a like sum or deposit a cash bail of Kenya shillings 10 million for the third accused person uh, the same is granted a uh, bail a cash bail of Kenya shillings 15 million it will have seven days within which to deposit that money judge andai alisema kwamba Iwapo hawatalipa shilingi milioni 15 kabla ya siku saba kukamilika wakurugenzi wote wa kampuni hiyo watakamatwa isipokuwa mwenyekiti The court directs that this money should be paid within seven days failure to which if the money will not have been paid then all the directors of the company with the exception of the second accused person due to the reasons explained will be arrested and they'll remain in custody pending their meeting the terms aida waliagizwa kuwasilisha stakabadhi zao zote za usafiri mahakamani kabla ya kuachiliwa i note from the submissions that uh, the accused persons are investors in the country <coughs> now there has not been given any reason to think that they can abscond these proceedings the need to deposit their passports in court however will be partly born out of the fact that not that they are going to abscond but that they will be available to attend court at the time appointed by the court so that the court does not have to wait for them whenever they have traveled out of the country 
kesi hiyo itatajwa tarehe mbili Septemba na kusikizwa tarehe ishirini na nne mwezi huo. Mention 2nd September that is the after two weeks we usually do it on the on the earliest Monday. So if we have to give the earliest Monday it has to be second. We mention on Mondays for convenience of the courts doing mentions. And then the pre trial will be will be 24th of September. Visa hivi vya ulagai vikizidi kukithiri nchini tutasubiri kuona hatua mahakama itakayochukua mbele ya wahusika ili kuweza kuhakikisha haki inatendeka nikiripotia tv47 kutoka mahakama ya milimani jijini nairobi Na mtazamaji zikiwa zimesalia saa chache kabla ya shughuli ya sensa kuanza rasmi msemaji wa serikali kanali Sera Soguna amewataka kwa Kenya kujitokeza kwa wingi ili waweze kuhesabiwa kwani hesabu hiyo itasaidia serikali katika mipango yake ya baadaye. Naye mkurugenzi mkuu wa idara ya takwimu za kitaifa Zakari Mwangi amesema wapo tayari kuendesha shughuli hiyo. Huku zikiwa zimebakia chini ya saa 24 kabla ya shughuli ya kuhesabu watu kuanza rasmi. Msemaji wa serikali ameomba wa Kenya kushirikiana na watakao endesha shughuli hiyo. Sababu kuu ya shughuli hii kufanyika mara moja kila baada ya miaka mikumi, sio tu kutambua changamoto zinazowakabili wa Kenya bali pia kuweza kujua ni namna gani serikali inaweza kuimarisha maisha ya wa Kenya. Huu muda ya kila mkenya kutoa mchango wake kwa serikali. Na huu mchango ni mdogo sana. Ni kwamba kesho jioni kuanzia saa mbili ujitokeze uweze kuhesabiwa. Wale wenye mabaa wakubali kufunga mabaa zao saa moja ili sote tuwe nyumbani tuweze kuhesabiwa. Mkurugenzi mkuu wa shirika la takwimu nchini bwana Zakari Mungi vile vile amewahakikishia wakenya kwamba kutakuwa na usalama ya data zote watakazopeana kwa wale watakaoendesha shughuli hiyo. When you do a digital census what you do is you test. We've been testing our system. We did a pilot in August 2018 and we've continuously been testing both the system and the data capture application so that if there are any issues and we are now very very sure because in a paper census for example you only do one pilot but this one we've done quite a number of, uh, pi uh, of uh, we've done one pilot we've done many tests and we've actually done like two major tests in terms of our system hata hivyo ikilinganishwa na ilivyokuwa miaka za awali wakati huu shughuli hiyo itaendeshwa kwa njia kidijitali it has a black cover uh, then all uh, the applications have been uploaded in this device uh, data management uh, system is inbuilt in this in terms of the security bwana zakari mwangi ameongezea kuwa mchakato wa utengenezaji na matayarisho ya kutumia njia ya kidijitali ilifanywa kulingana na mfumo wa umoja wa kimataifa kutokana na mikakati ambayo imewekwa watakao kuwa wanahesabu watu watakuwa wamevalia jaketi yenye rangi ya machungwa iliyofifia wasimamizi watakuwa wamevalia jaketi yenye rangi ya machungwa iliyokoza huku atakaye kuwa anashughulikia mambo ya kiteknolojia atakuwa amevalia jaketi yenye rangi nyekundu isitoshe kutakuwepo na walinda usalama pamoja na mwelekezi wale ambao watakuwa wanasafiri kutoka eneo moja hadi jingine watahesabiwa kwenye kituo cha magari na wale ambao watakuwa garini wakisafiri kutakuwa na baadhi ya maafisa ambao watasimamisha gari barabarani ambao watatambulika kupitia jaketi speciali ambazo zimetolewa kwa kuendesha shughuli hiyo hata iwapo shughuli hiyo itangoa nanga kesho kuanzia saa mbili jioni na kutarajiwa kuisha tarehe moja mwezi huu baadhi ya wakenya wameachwa na maswali Patrick Odwar anaeleza politicians wanatuambia turudi nyumbani tukahesabiwe hiyo si mambo mzuri kwa nini ende nyumbani nikahesabiwe kama si siasa naweza hesabiwa mali popote bora nijulikane niko Jonathan Kiguto ambaye ni mfanyabiashara katika jiji la Nairobi bado angali na tashu ishiku kuhusiana na usalama wa wananchi watu wengi wanaovia uh, usalama wao japo serikali imesikia kusema uh, itatoa ulinzi wa kutosha kufikia sasa serikali imetenga shilingi bilioni nane ili kufanikisha shughuli hiyo Nikiripotia TV47 kutoka kaunti ya Nairobi, mimi ni Paul Kirobi. Na msafi kabisa mtazamaji tukisalia katika masuala mazima ya census ni kuwa tu ni masaa machache tu. 
yamebaki kabla ya shughuli ya sensa kuanza lakini baadhi ya maeneo ya kaunti ya Wajia yamekumbwa na mzozo wa ya mipakani mwanahabari wetu Isadin Haji anaarifu Siku moja imesalia kabla ya shughuli ya sensa kuanza lakini baadhi ya maeneo ya kaunti ya Wajia yamekumbwa na mizozo wa mipaka Msafara wa mbunge wa Wajia Kaskazini ulivamiwa katika kata ya Masalale hapo jana na gari lake kuteketezwa Mbunge huyu aliweza kunusuriwa na maafisa wa polisi na baadaye ghasia hizo kusitishwa so this first flag was uh, down in uh, that commotion and the other one uh, went clean and other places were smashed but that one was uh, the police uh, came in very fast cool the the temperatures that were there they were not able to put off the fire for, from the first uh, Toyota Plado but the other one was towed to Maluka Gulf police station huku serikali ikifanya juhudi ya kutatua mizozo katika kaunti ya Wajia maswali mengi huibuka kuhusu utandakazi wa sensa kaunti ya Wajia ina mipaka na nchi jirani ya Somalia eneo bunge la Wajia Mashariki mara nyingi limeathiriwa na mashambulizi kutoka kwa kundi la kigaidi la Al Shabab. Serikali ya Kenya imefanya juhudi za kupigana na kundi hilo na sasa imezidisha juhudi ili kufanikisha shughuli ya sensa. Those areas we have assigned our various security forces along the border. KDF will provide security along the border I mean from Tajabura all the way to Konton and uh, part of Boyo Korfarar, that belt. Tangu ukame kwa thiri county ya Wajia, wafugaji wamehama kutafuta lishe bora kwa mifugo zao kwa maeneo jirani. Serikali ya Kenya ikisaidiana na idara zingine imefanya juhudi ya kuwapelekea chakula wafugaji hao ili waweze kurudi na kujisajili kwa shughuli ya sensa. Kwa katika North Eastern Borofis, watia wamehama, ingi naenda Eastern Borofis, ingi naenda Ethiopia, Today we decided to make a visit to the worst and the last end of Wajia East constituency, which is bordering Somalia, and the border is about six kilometers from here. Where you can be able to see the concentration is to flag off all interventions, all level of government to intervene on issues of drought. Shughuli ya sensa katika kaunti ya Wajia imeibua maswali mengi. Je, shughuli hiyo ambayo inaaminika kwanza hapo kesho itatatizwa na mizozo? Ukame umeathiri jamii hii. Swali kuu ni je, wakaji wa Wajia watajitokeza kuhesabiwa licha ya changamoto hizi? Isadin Haji TV 47 Wajia. Shukran sana mwana habari wetu kutoka maeneo ya Wajia Isadin Haji. Wengineko ni kuwa wenyeji wa kitongoji cha Shiranga wa milalamikio kusefu wa maji huku kiwa ni mwezi wa nne tangu tatizo hilo lilipoanza. Siku za hivi majuzi wa milalamikia kusaka maji maeneo mbalimbali hukuwa kishuhudia gharama kubwa ya bidhaa hiyo. Uhaba wa maji ndiyo kilio kinachosikika vinyoni mwa wengi katika kijiji hicho na ili kubaini ukweli wa kilio hicho tulielekea kwenye maeneo hayo. Kulingana na mkazi mmoja wa eneo hilo anaeleza kuwa uhaba wa maji umeleta athari kutokana na baadhi ya magonjwa kwa ni maji wanayoyapata hawafahamu yanakotekwa ukosefu wa maji umetuadhiri kwa sababu hatuna maji ya kutosha kuna magonjwa ambayo inaletwa na maji chafu ile ambayo tunapata maji tunachota na huku chini wengine tunanunua za shimo ambayo zinatudhuru zina chumvi nyingi ambayo zinazulu afya zetu vile vile Aliendelea kudai kuwa mwakilishi wadi wa eneo hilo la Njiru amebadilisha mkondo wa maji na kuelekeza eneo la Saika ila juhudi zetu za kupata mwakilishi wadi huyo ziliambulia patupu. Ndi kuwapeleka kwa hospitali na kansela wetu tu MCA wetu amekaa tu huko anashughulikia maji naenda mahali pengine mahali kumekaribia kwake na sisi hatuna. Kero hii ya maji imesababisha bi mwangi kukiri hana uwezo wa kuyateka maji kwa na uguo ugonjwa wa mgongo yani arthritis. Mimi hata sina mtu ya kuniletea maji. Mimi naletoa na mtu ya jirani kwa mtugi. Na niko na shida. Mguu inaniuma. Athalitis nimepata. 
siwezi kubeba mtugi wafanyi biashara pia hawajasazwa kwenye tandabeli wa hii kwani wanalazimika kuyanunua maji kwa baigali swala ambalo linawafanya kushuhudia hasara kubwa maji imekuwa shida juu maji sasa tunatolewa dadora hata sijui inatolewa wapi bora niletewe maji safi na kuletewa maji ni dhati bobu mtungi na huyo mtu unamlipa mbao kwa hivyo huyo mtu hiyo maji mtungi moja inahusikana 50 bob saa hii hakuna kitu mtu anapata kwa faida kwa hoteli tunafanya tu kazi ya bure kushikiria juu maji inakujanga mara moja kwa wiki sasa wanalazimika kuyateka maji kisimani jambo ambalo linawaweka kwenye hatari ya kukumbwa na magonjwa Yasemekana tu kwamba maji ni uhai lakini msemo ule unaonekana kutowafaa wakazi wa eneo hili la Shiranga kwani kila asubuhi wanaporauka na kuelekea kwenye mfereji yao wanachokumbana nacho ni kinyume cha walichotarajia sasa wanaomba serikali kuu na ile ya kaunti pamoja na washikado wengine waweze kuunga na mkono ili janga hili la ukosefu wa maji liweze kutiwa kikomo Zablon Mashari Runinga ya TV47 kutoka eneo la Shiranga kaunti ya Nairobi Barabara mtazamaji unaendelea kutizama upeo wa TV47 Runinga ni TV47 wapo unajiunga nasi kwa sasa kumbuka taarifa hiyo itatupeleka mapumziko mafupi tukirejea tuelekea na zaidi mengi zaidi kupitia taarifa zetu sende mbali mkewe alipigwa simu na rafiki yake Charles Gatimu Maina alikuwa ameaga dunia Tungependa hata zile zimefungwa sifunguliwe nao hao wanaita walikuwa naita shaitani Kando na babu yake amelazwa Martin Wahome Masharia aliyekunywa pombe inojulikana shetani kikunya hiyo fobia anakuja anapiga kelele mimi nataka kukufa mimi nataka kukufa mimi nataka kukufa
Karibu tena mtazamaji. Kumbuka unaendelea kutazama Upeo wa TV 47 kwa nami Esha Omar na mtangazaji kwa lugha ishara ni Josephine Ouko. Wasichana wengi mayatima ulazimika kuingia ukahaba wakiwa na umri mdogo kutokana na mateso yanayopitia mikononi mwa jamaa na walezi wao. Tazama. Wasichana ishirini walio chini ya umri wa miaka ishirini ni miongoni mwa wale na saba waliofuzu baada ya kukamilisha mafunzo ya kuwasaidia kujikimu na kuachana na maisha ya ukahaba mjini Eldore. Wasichana ambao ni under age. Unakuta msichana wa miaka saba akwa na watoto watatu na hao watoto wamefuatana mwaka mwaka meza hesabu alianza kuzaa kiwa miaka ngapi. Mafunzo hayo yalijumuisha ususi, ushonaji, maswala ya urembo miongoni mwa mengine. The courses they have done is hairdressing and beauty, fashion and design and handicraft course. Wengi wa wasichana hawa ni wale waliotelekezwa na jamaa zao baada ya wazazi wao kufariki wakiwa wachanga. Kuka bila mzazi ni ngumu, baba wala mama. Niko hivi. Dada wako lakini hata siezi juu penye wako. Wengine walisema walidanganywa kuja Eldoret kusaidiwa kupata ajira lakini walipofika hawakupata ajira na maisha ikawa magumu. Nilisoma mpaka standard 7. Nilifika Eldoret kupitia mama mmoja. Nikafika huku nikakuja nikaoleka. Hii but hii haikukua dini yangu but venye pesa ilikosekana nika nika nikaambia my aunt naweza fanya ikosu. Mradi huo unadhaminiwa na shirika la Solasa lililoko mtaa wa Langas na unalenga kubadilisha maisha ya akina mama na wasichana katika mitaa za mabanda. Idadi ya wasichana ambao wameweza kuingilia ukahaba hapa mjini Eldoret kutokana na changamoto tofauti imeonekana kuongezeka. Lakini jitihada kama hizi ambazo zinafaa kuungwa mkono na kuigwa zinafaa kuendelezwa zaidi katika mitaa tofauti hapa mjini ili kuleta mabadiliko. Nikiripotia TV47 kutoka Eldoret, kaunti ya Uasinigishu. Mimi ni Calvin Chitwa. Na msafi kabisa tunakutoa maeneo yale ya kule Eldoret. Moja kwa moja tunafuliza hadi Kisumu ambapo serikali ya kaunti ya Kisumu pamoja na washika dau wameanzisha mpango wa uhamasisha wa hamisi, mpango wa kuhamasisha wanafunzi katika swala zima hilo la usafi. Mwanahabari wetu kutoka Kisumu ana taarifa. Moja kati ya wagonjwa watano wanaohudumiwa hospitalini huwa wana magonjwa ya kuendesha. Hii ni kulingana na shirika la Rekit kwa ushirikiano na serikali ya kaunti imepelekea kuzindua mpango wa kudumisha usafi shuleni. This initiative today will uh, will eventually thousands of families across the county to improve our hygiene practices and in particular hand washing. As Delhi said that research shows that a large population of the disease burden that we carry is caused by poor hygiene, inadequate sanitation practices and unsafe drinking water. And they color them so we Akizungumza na wanahabari kwa niaba ya serikali ya kaunti, Daktari Otieno amesema kuwa kima cha shilingi milioni 140 hupotea kupitia kwa mpango wa kuzuia mchipuko wa maradhi ya kuendesha. We are losing at, at least 140 million in terms of healthcare costs that comes with the poor sanitation and hygiene among children and households. As you all know that poor hygiene leads to diseases such as diarrhea, influenza, and uh, other infections which are very costly to treat in our healthcare system. If we prevent these infections, the county is able to save at least uh, 140 million in terms of healthcare cost for the citizens of Kisumu County. That's the test. I want you to listen very carefully. Triza Kinoru, ambaye ni msimamizi wa tawi la kampuni ya Detol, anasema kuwa mradi huu unaolenga wanafunzi elfu msini jimbo la Kisumu understand the need of people living their fullest lives and unfortunately amongst children is becoming a problem because of simple things that can be controlled by simple hand hygiene. Kids are missing schools because of cholera, diarrhea and we think if the kids help us to champion this program it will really go a long way into creating a better 
uh, country, even for our economy, for the general welfare. And we want to roll out this in one million children by the year 2020. So far we've been doing it and so far we've touched eight million children from the year 2012. But the target for next year is one million, but the pilot project for Kisumu is targeting 50,000 children. Just to move this dialogue or this conversation forward in terms of raising the awareness level of hygiene practice, um, like we heard in the, in the room uh, from the SPACT about the cost of the burden of diseases, especially for the kids, in terms of loss, uh, in terms of school losses, in terms of times that they have to have absenteeism, and also productivity loss in workplace. Ni bayana kuwa kusefu wa kuosha mikono vizuri kumechangia maradhi ya kuendesha miongoni mwa wanafunzi. Mradi huu kizingatiwa vizuri bila shaka utaleta manufaa kwa wanafunzi hawa na jamii kwa ujumla. Daniel Dembede TV47 Kaunti ya Kisumu. Naam, shukrani sana mwana habari wetu wa Kisumu Daniel Ndebele. Wengineko ni kuwa hafla ya kibinasi ya makumbusho yaliyokuwa makamu wa rais wa nane wa taifa la Kenya hayati Michael Kijana wa Malwa yamefanyika katika kanisa katoliki la Immaculate mjini Kitale. Boniface Baraza alihudhuria na kuwatondelea taarifa ifuatayo. Ibada hiyo ya misa imewajumuisha jamaa ndugu na marafiki wakimkumbuka hayati kijana wa Malwa kwa kiongozi shupavu aliyeunganisha taifa hili pasi kujali misingi ya kikabila. Eugene wa Malwa ni waziri wa ugatuzi na kakae kijana wa Malwa. Mike was a very pragmatic politician. He was a national leader. Hakuwa mtu wa kugawanya watu kwa misingi ya kikabila kwa misingi ya kijamii ama misingi ya kidini he believed we are all god's children and being god's children we are one family under god and we are children of the same mother called kenya he was a very generous man he was a very kind man and i think what I'm talking about are the memories that I have. Today, for us, is also a memory. We can make it a good memory, and we can make it a beginning of a change to our lives. Aida wa Malwa amewataka viongozi wa taifa hili kusitisha siasa za uhasama na kuleta migawanyiko miongoni mwa Kenya. I believe he would have agreed with his excellency the president yesterday that we should say no to divisive politics. Politics that would divide us along the lines of which family you come from, which tribe you come from, which region or which religion you come from. I think what we should be fighting for is not to divide, but to unite this country so that we move together as one family. Kando na jamii kamishna wa kaunti hii Samu Jwanga mamtaji hayati wa malwa kama aliyekuwa kiongozi mstaarabu na kuwarai viongozi kufuata nyayo zake. Can we respect each other? Can we appreciate each other? Can we be ready and willing to support one another as the great people of Kenya? That would be the best thing that we would ever do in appreciation of who the late vice president was. Can we love this country? Can we love Kenyans without, without any conditionalities in the way that he did? Kadhalika kiranja wa chache katika bunge la county la Transoya ya Eric Msumba amependekeza hospitali ya Rufai na yojengwa mjini Kitale kutajwa baada ya hayati wa Malwa kijana kama njia mojawapo ya kumkumbuka. Wa Malwa aliaga dunia tarehe 23 mwezi Agosti mwaka 2023 katika hospitali moja mjini London Uingereza. Ukumbusho wa leo ukiadhimisha miaka 16 tangia kifo chake. Ni hafla ambayo inatoa nafasi ya kuibua kumbukizi ya mwenda zake ya hayati wa Malwa kijana viongozi wakitakiwa kuiga mienendo yake hayati wa Malwa. Kutoka kanisa katoliki jimbo la Kitale katika gatuzi la Transoya ni Kiarifia TV47. Jina langu ni Boniface Barasa. Na msafi kabisa mashirika kutetea haki za bina Adam katika eneo la Pwani umefanya kikao na wanahabari kuunga mkono zoezi la sensa la mwaka huu huku kiwataka wakazi wa Pwani kujitokeza kwa wingi ili kuhesabiwa. Akiongea katika kikao na wanahabari Naila Abdala mkurugenzi mkuu wa shirika la Sister for Justice alisema wana matumaini makubwa kuwa wapwani watahesabiwa ili kufikia matarajio ya wakazi milioni sita katika eneo hili ili mgao wa serikali utakapogawanywa basi pwani inufaike kimaendeleo 
hereby calls on all people in Mombasa and the coast to turn out in large numbers to be counted in the upcoming population census. The main days of the census are 24th and 25th of August, and we are urging all the local communities to remain in their homes and ensure they are all counted. Over the years, the population at the Na msafi kabisa tutachukua mapumziko mafupi tukirudi baadaye tutarejea taarifa zaidi zikiwemo za sport. Kumbuka unaendelea kupokea upeo wa TV 47 awamu ya saa tatu. Sende mbali. Nyumba yetu iko katika sehemu ya Lindi. Lindi ni katikati mwa Kibera Slam. Ukitoka Katwekere utapass through Kisumu ndogo ndio ufike hapa Lindi. Pia kuna pali pengine kama Darajani, Kisumu ndogo, High Rise, Soweto. Tunapenda Kibera kwa sababu hapa ndio mali tumezaliwa. Tunalelewa hapa, tunaishi hapa na wazazi wetu, tunakula hapa. Maisha huku Kibera ni mazuri, pia ni matamu. Cha muhimu tu ni wewe uamke mapema asubuhi ujipange ukijua kile ambacho utafanya hiyo siku ni sawa kwa sababu siku ikienda hivyo imeenda kila siku kwangu ni special nimefurahia sana kwa mwanahabari mdogo hii ni opportunity kubwa sana kwangu napata fursa ya, ku, ya kutoa hadithi yangu pia kus, kutoa hadithi ya kibera kwa sababu sisi ndo tunaishi huku sisi ndo tunaielewa Mvua ilikuwa dhiri kivipi? Nikuja ghafla. Sasa kidogo tu ndio ngaona maji ikatoa tu sana kwa mkono ushwe. Lazima Amen. tuseme hadithi ya ukweli. Jina langu ni Sylvia Dhiambo na hii ni TV47. Mswa Dakta Mtazamaji kumbuko unendelea kutizama tarifa zetu za kipeke za TV47. Kumbuka ni upewa TV47 awamu miya saa tatu. Karibu sana tuendelea kukupasha. Serekali inazimia kuunda miswada itakazuwe ungeze kula mitaduni na badala yake kuboresha mitaduni liopo. Hii ni baada miradi ya awali ya kujenga nyumba za bena fuu kukumbo na hitilafu na changa moto nyingi. Mwanabari wetu zipora siokau ana maelezo zaidi Mitaaduni nchini imehasabiwa kuwa Visa vingi vya ukosefu wa kazi vimewalazimu ingawaje serikali imekuwa ikijihusisha katika kujenga nyumba za bei nafuu za wakazi wa mitaaduni sekta hii imezidi kukumbwa na changamoto zinazolemaza miradi hiyo Miongoni mwa changamoto hizi ni ukosefu wa miundombinu mizuri nyumba za bei nafuu kwa wakazi na tatizo la maji na usafi wa mazingira. 
wakiongozwa na Patrick Butcher, katibu katika idara ya nyumba na maendeleo ya miji, Wizara ya Nyumba hii leo imefanya mkutano na wanakamati kutoka kaunti moja kuhamasisha kuhusu mswada wa kuboresha mitaaduni. Haya yanajiri baada ya sera hii kupitishwa na bunge la seneti. We agree on what needs to be in the bill today. We should be able to go out there to buy to make sure the stakeholders have taken it particularly the counties because more of it will be implemented by the counties so that the counties appreciate what the bill is is, is all about Bucha alisema kwamba mswada huu utasaidia kukabiliana na changamoto za mradi wa kujenga nyumba za bei nafuu talks about the issue of land tenure what rights do the people who live in slums you know have then he talks about the issue of upgrading upgrading the slums the type of upgrading that we are going to do within the within the slums in terms of provision of the infrastructure like provision of water provision of electricity provision of uh, of sewer he talks about also how do you deal with the issues of the how how do you how do you allocate people katika mswada huu unaundwa wizara ya nyumba ilarifu kwamba walihusisha washikadau wote wakiwemo wakazi wa mitaaduni walio na useme mkubwa katika swala hili of the major issues that to do under slum upgrading is involvement of the community themselves even here in today's meeting we have muungano wa wanavijiji they are part of people who are participating because these decisions we are making affects them and therefore they have to get a solution or give us a solution themselves. Umelki wa nyumba ni mojawapo ya ajenda kuu ya serikali na ujenzi wa nyumba za bei nafuu ni mojawapo ya kitengo kikuu katika ajenda hii. Nikiripoti ya TV47 Minizi Porres Yokao. Na barabara tukiendelea taarifa zetu ni kuwa zikuwa zimesalia tu saa chache kabla shughuli nzima ya zoezi la census kuanza chama cha chama cha watu walio ama wasio na uwezo wa kusikia wamelalamikia serikali pamoja uh, na uh, wameweza kulalamikia serikali uh, pamoja na halmashauri hiyo ya kushughulikia hesabu ya watu nchini kwa kutohusisha mwanahabari wetu Andrin Kilemi anaarifu tomorrow at around 6 pm we are going to begin the national census so the enumerators when they'll be knocking the doors at night for most deaf people at night will not hear when the doors will be, no will be knocked so our houses do not do not have the flashlights do not have the bells so if a person comes to knock at the door so it will be impossible for a deaf person to hear what will be happening outside there so this one shows clearly that the government is going to leave out 5% of persons in Kenya who are deaf na msafi kabisa tukiachana na masuala mazima ya census moja kwa moja tunaelekea hadi nyanjani ambapo uh, hatimaye mashindano ya vikosi vya jeshi kutoka maeneo mazima ya Afrika Mashariki wameweza kutamatisha mchuano huu ambao ulifanyika katika uga wa Kasarani. Tazama. Deepening and widening cooperation among partner states, which resonates well with our efforts to build bridges of unity and fraternity within our region as well as our country. Na msafi kabisa tukirejelea taarifa ya awali kuhusu masuala mazima ya census ni kuwa Uh, jamii ya wafugaji wameambiwa wame ama wamearifuwa kurejea makwao ili waweze kuhesabika katika zoezi zima la census tazama 
Kwa mujibu wa mbunge wa Kapenguria Samuel Moroto amesema idadi ya watu tumika katika ugavi wa rasmali na hivyo ni muhimu kila mkazi na wageni kuhesabiwa hata kuwataka wale wote waliokwenda malishoni kurejea manyumbani ili kuhesabiwa. 22nd leo na kesho watu wanarudi nyumbani hata ngombe inakuja. Tunafunga huko. Hatuwaje hata mtu mmoja wanakuja. 24th 25 wanarudi. Hata ukienda sahihi sehemu ya Kajiliba mpaka ya Kenya na Uganda vile watu wamerudi. Ukienda Takwel na kutaramko huko hivi vile watu wanarudi. Kwanza watu lazima tunatembea na tunaambia wale wazee wa mitaa. Enda angalia kila boma nani huyu atafika. Hmm? Hata sasa mimi kesho kuto na safiri. Lakini kabla sijasafiri kwanza na namba yangu na pena na, na pena hesabu yangu ndio niende nje. Na unajua kali jetu pia samani ukija kuulizwa wewe mama ama mzee una watoto wangapi? Unaambiwa unataka kuroka watoto wangu? Huwezi kusema namba ya watoto lakini sasa tutakubali tutasema hata paka ile kwa tumbo. Ndio <laughs> ibate kuongeza numbers. Matamshi sawa na hayo yametolewa na kiongozi wa chanche katika bunge la county la Transoe Emmanuel Waswa. Sababu wodi yangu iko mpakani na waimiza wananchi wa Kenya wajitokeze kwa wingi wakati wa napokuwa wanesabiwa asa wale wenzetu wa pokota ambao wako Transoya na labda wameenda malishoni kule Uganda ninawaomba warudi nyumbani ili tuhakikishe kuwa wamehesabiwa na pesa inapokaiwa mgao ije katika kaunti yetu ndio tufanye maendeleo Uli Sawime karibu naye gavana wa Bungoma Weekly Fongamati aliyetaja takwimu kama nguzo muhimu na itumika katika ugavi wa rasmali na hii maneno ya census wanaenda kwa hesabu watu Kenya mzima na ugawi wa resources za Kenya itategemea wingi wa watu. Nataka kuambia watu hapa tarehe 24 25 tunataka watu wa Tanzania, watu wa Bungoma, watu wa Kakamega, watu wa Vihiga, watu wa Busia tujitokeze kwa wingi so that we are counted at the end of the day is going to determine the resources that we come back there. Ikumbukwe senza ufanyika nchini kila baada ya miaka kumi kutambua idadi ya watu ili kufanikisha kusambazwa kwa rasmali ya kuboresha maendeleo nchini. Hukuma mlaka ya kitaifa takwimu ya KNBS kisema kwamba kwa mara ya kwanza katika historia ya Kenya shughuli yenyewe itaandaliwa katika njia ya kidijitali. Idadi ya watu nchini iliripotiwa kuwa milioni 38.6 katika senza ya mwaka 2009 ikilinganishwa na milioni 28.7 mwaka 1999 huku mwaka 1989 idadi ikiwa milioni 21.4 na milioni 15.3 mwaka 1979. Kutoka kijiji cha Talao katika eneo bunge la Kapenguria katika kaunti ya Pokot Magharibi Niki Arifia TV 47 jina langu ni Bonfast Barasa. Na msafi kabisa mtazamaji kama kawaida waambiwa zoezi hili la sons la sensors huwa uh, ni muhimu sana kwa sisi wa Kenya hivi basi jitokeze uweze kuhesabiwa kwani zoezi hili hufanyika kila baada ya miaka kumi. Nasema asante sana kwa kwa kuchagua taifa zetu za upeo wa TV 47 kumbuka awamu ni ya saa tatu. Mimi ni Esha Omar mtangazaji kwa lugha ishara alikuwa ni Josephine Oko. Kutakia wewe weekend njema na kila laheri na usiku usiokuwa na bogda. Ala msiki.